All right, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for coming to this uh, workshop kickoff. So uh, let's get this started by, uh, first of all, uh, a brief introduction about FSV, what FSV is. Hello? Yeah, we yes, can hear you. Um, thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed participants and fellow enthusiasts of technology and innovation. Today, I stand before you as a representative of an organization that's committed to shaping the landscape of technology education in Africa, A2SV, Africa to Silicon Valley. It's my honor to introduce you to the essence of A2SV, our vision, our remarkable achievements, and most importantly, how each and every one of you can be a part of this transformative journey. A2SV is more than just an organization, it's a movement. Our vision is rooted in addressing a significant challenge that has hindered the growth of tech talent in Africa. We recognize that the gap between computer science education and the real world needs of the industry has led to untapped potential and missed opportunities. Our vision is to bridge this gap, to create a seamless transition from classrooms to boardrooms, from theory to impactful innovation. Over the years, FACV has accomplished remarkable feats that echo our commitment to change. We've nurtured the community of young minds and provided them with practical, practice-based learning experiences. Our collaboration with esteemed institutions ac institutions across Africa, such as Addis Ababa University and the University of Ghana Legon, has allowed us to identify and empower the most talented students. But our achievements don't stop there. We've placed our students at tech giants like Google, Palantir, Databricks, LinkedIn, Bloomberg, and Amazon, opening doors to internships and job opportunities for our students opportunities that were once distant dreams. So, how can you be part of this revolution? It's simpler than you might think. FSC welcomes individuals who share our passion for technology and our vision for change. Whether you're a coding prodigy, an AI enthusiast, or a tech enthusiast with a burning curiosity, there is a place for you in our community. You might be wondering how to join us. The answer is straightforward. Join our community. Please visit our Hackathon website for instructions on how to do that. In closing, a 2 is just not an organization. It's a journey, an opportunity, a testament to what we can achieve when we unite under a common goal. Let's break the barriers, push the boundaries, and redefine what's possible. Join us in transforming education, in creating opportunities, and in carving a new of technological advancement for Africa. Thank you. Back to you, Bernard. All right. Thank you so much, Ruth. So uh, let's move on about uh, about our generative AI hackathon. I'll give you uh, a short uh, overview about uh, this hackathon. So what's the generative AI hackathon? It's mainly focused on providing students with the resource uh, to unlock the power of AI and use it uh, to tackle most of Africans' uh, problems. So the main purpose of uh, this hackathon is First of all, to foster creativity and solutions across the Africa and also promote generative AI technologies and innovations. As you know, generative AI is becoming more popular in these days and, is, and it is expected to be as revolutionary as the internet. So Africans need to get into this boat and move on and work along with the world to stay uh, up to the top tech trend. So, the second purpose for this hackathon is promoting generative AI technologies and innovation. Third one is strengthening team spirit and also showcasing your talents and sharpening your skills and uh, have fun and innovate. Like this is uh, a really good chance for you uh, to demonstrate what you can, what you are capable of and what you can do uh, using generative AI and other technologies. So uh, yeah, use this moment to showcase your talents and also in the meantime, in the process, have fun and innovate as much as you can. So uh, the scheduling and the format, uh, as you know, from August 1 to August 19, it was uh, participant registration for the hackathon and uh, starting today and tomorrow we will have uh, a workshop on understanding of generative AI, uh, hackathon dynamics and also idea generation. After that, we will move on to the uh, remote hackathon phase, which will be conducted starting uh, August 25 to 27. So in this remote hackathon, participants will compete uh, in a 50 hour of remote hackathon for a place to be top three, 30 projects. 
Then after the quarterfinal, we will move on to the semifinal. So uh, we won't just abandon those 13 projects on air after the hackathon is complete. We will follow up, uh, we will continue guidance from uh, our advisors who are uh, experts in their fields to refine these certain projects to meet their uh, potential. So uh, in this process, we'll try to select uh, top 13 projects from uh, uh, the 30 projects and we will move on to, to, uh, to the grand finale, which will be conducted in November uh, 11 to 13. So top eight teams. Uh, are going to be flown to Ethiopia uh, to, complete, uh, to compete for a total prize of uh, $30,000. So the first uh, person or the, first, the winner of this hackathon will get a 10,000 and the runner-ups will get 6,000 and 4,000 in prizes. And we have other four trucks that are mentioned in our websites. Each of these trucks will uh, give you the opportunity to win up to uh, 25 dollars So what we use uh, as a judging criteria, uh, the first one is innovation and creativity. Uh, the second one is technical implementations. Our judges uh, have uh, a deep experience in technical implementation of uh, uh, softwares and uh, in generative area sectors. So we'll try to uh, you know, assess your technical uh, implementation as well. So be mindful of that. The third one is user experience and completeness. Of course, every project should be uh, at least completed uh, for the minimum value products. Uh, the fourth one uh, is the impact. And the last but not least is the presentations, guys. So uh, without your presentations, we won't be able to see uh, what you have done and what you have uh, accomplished during that. So uh, be mindful of that. So. Yeah, that's the judging criteria. The prizes, as I mentioned, are the winner will get 10,000, the runner-ups will get uh, 6,000 and 4,000 respectively. So yeah, uh, this is uh, the general overview of our hackathon. Now I would like to invite uh, our uh, CEO, Mr. Emre Faro, uh, to give us uh, a speech. So uh, Mr. Emre, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Vaimnet. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are here for a cause uh, that is greater than ourselves. We are here for the future of Africa. For over four years, uh, for about four years, A2SV has been more than an academy. We have been a catalyst for change and a movement. So our purpose extends beyond training individuals. We are fostering an environment where technology is a tool for positive transformation. We have six remarkable digital projects coming to the market soon, designed to give back to our people and solve real African challenges. These projects are our pledge that skills nurtured here are aimed at uplifting communities. And our students are living proof of this promise. We have placed over 400 of our brilliant minds in prestigious companies like Google, Amazon, Bloomberg, Databricks, LinkedIn, and Palantir. These are not just placements. They are milestones in our journey of a global impact that started right here with Africans. Now, the Generative AI for Africa Hackathon takes this mission a step further. With over 1,200 participants from 39 African countries, we are cultivating a generation of problem solvers innovators, and future leaders. To our students, African students, you are at the heart of this movement. You are the architects of a brighter and more prestigious future for Africa. And as a TSV staff, we believe in you. To the tech companies, we invite you to witness the exceptional talent that Africa harbors. And 
to our potential funding partners. Your support is vital. It is a bridge that turns aspirations into realities and dreams into more impactful and lasting change. This is A2SV empowering Africa's youth to master technology, to serve the world and give back to their roots. Please join us in this transformative journey. Together, let's craft the future of Africa, not only needs, but it actually rightfully deserves. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambre. So uh, now let's move on to our senior remarks. Uh, Mr. Arthur, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Very proud to be here among you, among people who are going to change the fate of a continent. I would like to approach this uh, event in a, I would say, in a more emotional way. You know, there are times in people's lives when they see an opportunity to change the fate, to change the future. Now, here is the time. So you have somehow crossed your roads with A2SV, which is a multinational foundation aimed in helping African people all over from the world, from Croatia, from Turkey, from the States, from Zimbabwe, from Ethiopia, from Ghana, a multinational organization that is capable really of changing the fate of a continent. Now, today, by attending this hackathon, you have the chance to change not only your own lives, but the fate of a whole continent. Just remember this, you know, you are the lions of Africa. You have the capacity, you are the future leaders. Probably some of you will continue in the technology field. Some of you will be device five to some other areas. But at the end of the day, being such brighter minds of a continent, you will shape the continent. What I would advise you as a senior one is be proactive, be innovative, hard worker, be resilient. Don't ever, but ever tackle with the obstacles, but try to overcome them. Just the last word, work hard, dream hard and make your dreams come true thank you very much all right uh thank you mr Harper, for the senior remarks so uh now yeah uh, we will move on to the expected uh the highly expected uh, workshop we'll start uh with our innovative idea generation mr uh Yektao scan is here uh, he's a trader he's a consultant he has already read, already written over uh, eight books. So uh, I will leave the stage for him to introduce himself and uh, to give us uh, the workshop on the innovative idea generation. So, Mr. Rekta, uh, the stage is yours. Thank, thank you very much, Ferus. Uh, I really appreciated the action. Uh, I'm glad that we are together. Uh, I'm connect. I'm from Turkey. I'm connecting you from uh, Samsung, which is the north meet part of Turkey. By coincidence, I'm in a workshop here. Uh, and if there's a connection problem, uh, I will try to do my best. I'm very, very glad uh, that I'm participating in it because I strongly believe in the social in entrepreneurship. And I uh, I really agree what Ferus said and also Alper said. Uh, we need to, all of us, we need to work hard, uh, dream hard, we should uh, form something for the world, for the environment, for the health, uh, for the African people, for the world people. And I'm really, really glad to be a part of it. Um, these are my contact uh, information. You can take the photograph of it if you want. In case you need to ask something later on, you can write to yekta.ozozer.com.tr. This is in Turkish. And this is my mobile. You can send me a WhatsApp uh, message if you want. And also there are some 
uh, YouTube videos, sürekli gelişim TV, you can be subscriber and you can uh, follow them, some of them are in English and uh, there are also some articles, some of them are in English. So uh, also from the LinkedIn, you can be followed. Uh, briefly, my uh, very shortly, my resume, I'm 58 years old. Uh, I was born in 1965 in Izmir, Turkey. I graduated from uh, Bosphorus Electrical and Electronics Engineer. This is why I'm a little bit closer to uh, A2SV issues like generative AI. Today, I'm doing some kind of uh, digital transformation Uh, projects. This is why I'm close to it. And I graduated from the university. Meanwhile, I worked uh, in some companies during the university years. Like you, I was during the uh, studentship or internship, I was also in the work life. So I worked in Philips Holland, uh, R&D and Belgium, uh, ITT, R&D. And, and also I got my MSc in finance degree in, uh, in Britain. Uh, and meanwhile, I worked hard in, uh, like Alper said, in many, many companies. I was the top executive. Then as of 2003, I became the uh, mentor and uh, I became mentor, uh, coach, trainer and consultant for companies. I also like to work a lot with the startups. I give a consultancy to two incubators, uh, incubation centers in Turkey. And I also have a very close contact with these startups. Uh, young people like you, I, I'm really happy to be together. As he said, I have eight books. Uh, one of them is in English, and I'm writing the ninth book in English as well now. Um, my areas is hackathon startups, digital transformation, design thinking, innovation, a lot of aspects, and also some other uh, personal training issues. Uh, I will first start by uh, how to enlarge our vision related with that. For this, what we should do is uh, we should understand the brain's mechanism. Uh, I will talk briefly about it. Our brain mechanism works in a way that as if we are establishing the road paths. Why do we do it is because of the universe, one of the certain rules, which is efficiency. As you know, in the world, uh, efficiency is important. I wrote two books about animals and plants. How do they do the innovation? Uh, they do the innovation in one certain, with one certain target. Every animal and every plant, and also every biobacterial mechanism, they are effective and efficient. So what they do is they reduce the time, reduce the energy, reduce the energy efforts, reduce the risks, but increase the uh, uh, benefits related with that. So our brain works in that way. For example, let's assume that you have a kid, two months old. This baby, girl or boy, when you show something to her, something like this a shape, This uh, is reflected to her or his retina, and this should go to the visual center of the brain, which is here. So meanwhile, we, he, she or she, let's say she, establish a root path. What she does is she connects the neurons together. In our brain, there are 100,000 uh, nerve cells And among them, 85% of them are uh, neurons. Neurons are the uh, specialized nerve cells, which are sometimes specialized in hearing, specialized in smelling, specialized in thinking or visual recognition. So when she wants to see this part, this info from retina, the, the image, goes to here by connecting the neurons. Once she does this to a month old baby, then we show this shape again to her the next day, uh, highly probably her brain uses the same path. The third day, she uses the path certainly. The fourth day, fourth day it becomes a root path. So after a while, brain, Right 
rather than establishing a new root path, tries to use the same root path. But if you give her another shape, like this one, the blue one, then she establishes another root path because these two are different. So if you, if you want to help our children to be more creative, we need to expose, expose her or he to different environment, to different languages, to different shapes, to different concepts. You as youngsters, if you want to increase your brain capacity, you need to expose yourself different industries, different sectors. For example, it is better, for example, if you are in Addis Ababa University or Addis Ababa uh, Science and Technology University, it is better that you know generative AI, but also mechatronic, electronics, some knowledge about medicine, some knowledge about food technologies, some knowledge about uh, aerospace, some knowledge about local people's needs, some knowledge about Croatian people's needs, some knowledge about Ghana people's needs, and all over the world, you need to get more information. The more information you are exposed to, the more experience, different experience you are exposed to, you have a more neural path in your brain. So this increases creativity and vision. My modest suggestion to you is please be curious. And if you are curious, and if you work hard, if you learn hard, if you learn more things, but not from the books, by real experience, then your neural paths establish more and more. So if you read a book, there is a connection, but this route to be permanent, you need to experience it. So it is better that in the entrepreneurship, or having a startup, you expose to the, your real customers. You expose to the real technician who does it. You really expose to your universal lectures. You expose to different friends. The more you do it, the better your brain capacity works. So normally, our brain capacity pushes us to use the same paths, particularly if the age is increased. For example, if you come to my age, like 58, your neural paths are more or less are established. And for example, me to learn a different thing is more difficult than you to learn as a young people. So I need to push my brain more to learn more. So please push your brain, learn different languages, learn different skills, but apply it. Don't learn it from the literature. Don't learn it from the books. Please experience it and share it with it. So our brain pushes us towards red paths, which is the certain paths, but to be an entrepreneur and successful in startups, we need to push for the new neural paths to be established. So this is the first challenge. I wrote this in my books. Also, there are other aspects in the brain. This aspect is related with the neurotransmitters. You see the, some green dots here. When our neurons connect to each other, there's a snaps gap in between. So if we perceive an event, or if our two months old daughter or niece receives or perceives something, if there's a kind of a sense or stimulation related with it, the related sense in the neurohormone form enters there. For example, uh, you uh, are, do you support any team? For example, any football team. I know that, for example, some friends from Addis Ababa and Ethiopia watch British English Premier League. Do you have any support of the club? Any of you, for example, Ferus, Surafa, oh, United. Okay, Arsenal, very good. Arsenal, United, okay. Man is it Manchester United, Bereket, or Newcastle United? Okay, so if you watch a 
Manchester United. There is a good feeling about Manchester United in the green dots within my snaps gap. So when I see a position, whether it's a penalty or not, I'm not a objective anymore. I'm subjective because these senses there, the feelings uh, embedded in the neural path pushes my perceptions towards somewhere. So please know that none of us are objective. This is why, for example, if we see a friend from old times, we become happy. happy. If you have two months old daughter, if she sees you and if she loves you and if you love her too, then she smiles because in her neural path related with the dad or ankle or aunt, there's a good feeling. This feeling pushes her feelings towards the positive side. So she is not objective anymore. We are not objective anymore also. One of the certain trap, one of the certain shortcoming of the entrepreneur is for him or her to love, love her product, his product. Since we developed the product, since we developed the service, we have a very good feeling about it. So we may not see the shortcomings, difficulties, or, or nonsense side of the product. For example, a friend of mine can come and be, or MD, or iPad may say that, Yekta, this product will not work. But I will say that, no, it works, because I love my product. So I'm not objective related with it. So at one hand, I need to be supporting my product. I should work hard because it is a kind of a word that it should rebirth from the zero. So I should push and help my product. Otherwise, my product doesn't work as a startup. But at the other side of the uh, aspect, if there's a real correct criticism about my product, my startup, my actions, I may not perceive it objectively, I may be offended because the feeling here related to my product is related to my feelings as well. So I should be objective as well, particularly for the customer reviews. I mean, sometimes customer doesn't like the product or in the customer journey, there's some shortcomings that make my product failing. So I should be objective related with, please be, try to be as objective as to the product, to the service, to the startup, to your teammates as well. Sometimes you may need to invite a friend, a colleague. You may not like him, but you need to work together well with him because, for example, he is very good at generative AI to chat GPT or uh, in, in some kind of uh, artificial intelligence. It could be C++, if it could be JavaScript, it could be Python. It could be, as I said, general truth AIs, chat GPT, Chrome GPT. So he's a good guy, but I don't like him. We should manage to work together with him because my feelings will push me to the negative side Perhaps these feelings will push him to the negative side as well, but I should find a way to work together. So briefly, brain gives us a certain perspective. At the years pa as the pe years passes through, it is becoming affirmed. It is becoming established. So I may not see the different angle. And meanwhile, there are some feelings are going there and there are also neural hormones are coming there. For example, when I wake up during the morning, my cortisol level goes up because it gives me and my body a message that you are not at sleep, so don't be such relaxed. Be alert because there might be some environmental challenges and threats, some risks. So my cortisol level increases and it goes to the neurotransmitter. But at the same time, it increases my glucagon. 
So glycogen gives me energy as well. But meanwhile, if I eat too much desert or bread, you then have some bellies like me. So I should know that this mechanism also affects my body. These neurotransmitters and neural hormones. Another one, serotonin gives me happiness. Oxytocin gives me safety and calmness, which is very important for the mothers. Mothers give from the mother's milk to the, their daughter or uh, son, they, from this milk, oxytocin neurotransmitters. And also endorphin, which is, gives me endorsement and uh, sustainability against pain and stress. And also, one thing is very important for entrepreneurs, dopamine. Dopamine gives me pleasure and increases my uh, movement. So I need to see some rewards. So my suggestion to you is that when you do the project, please be, please put some uh, deadlines where you will get some small results. For example, this is very dangerous to have a three month project and to work on the project, but not get anything. Your dopamine level lowers. But if you do some, for example, in the second week of the project, if you achieve at least to a small target, then celebrate it with your team. This will increase your dopamine. This will increase your serotonin. This will increase your oxytocin. This will increase your endorphin. So this will increase your robustness, enthusiasm, motivation towards the project. So in each project, rather than to it to be the endless, not seeing the future project, it should be it should have some thresholds and it should have some uh, deadlines where you celebrate the success. So this will increase your uh, motivation. Also increase the customer's motivation. Put something in your products or service that they will be happy. If they feel happy, their serotonin level increases and they will come again for your product or services. Do the same with your team. Celebrate but celebrate for the real courses. And also uh, try to change your paradigm because this brain works like this. These are neurons and they, they make a connection. As you see, there are some neurotransmitters uh, uh, flowing through it. And this brings the, for example, visual to hear and smell to go somewhere else. Uh, here to go into my hearing center. So this flows like this, and in between them, there are neurotransmitters. So once the neurons establish like this, it gives me a perspective, which is it reduces my difficulties. So it is very easy for me to survive. The brain works in this way, this way with the efficiency because it tries to reduce energy and also it tries to reduce the difficulties. So I'm a kind of an automatic man. I'm working automated way. So what I do is, for example, I never think of changing the gear when I drive. Or when I walk, I never think of which step to take or the next step. And my brain does it automatically. This mechanism, the automated neural path mechanism, relieves my brain so I can focus to do threats and risk around so that I can survive. It also reduces my energy level so my brain uses less, less energy so I can survive. But if you are an entrepreneur, if you, are a, if you have a startup or if you are in a startup team, this is dangerous for you because this gives you an, a certain paradigms like this rhinoceros. All these animals sees their horns in the middle of their vision. So they are biased. They cannot see objectively. Also, I cannot see objectively. If I work in a certain country, like for example, I work in Turkey, but I visited 56 countries. In each country, there are different paradigms. So I should adapt my paradigm differently. For example, if I come to Addis Ababa, I should leave my 50 years of, eight of years of experience to a site. I should learn from zero. 
If I come to Akka, capital of Ghana, or if I come to again Addis Ababa, or if I go to Zimbabwe, I should reformat my brain. I should never say that I'm Yekta, I'm 58 years old, I have been in business life over the last 40 years. I know this. This is the biggest mistake I will do. The best thing I can do is I should start that I don't know and I should learn from local guys there. I should be a close contact to Abenezer. I should be close co having a close contact with Estefanos. I should have a very close contact with Yaret Sangare. I should have a very good close contact with Emre, who is in Palo Alto at the moment. I should have a good contact and understanding of Biruk. So I should reformat my brain. If I don't do this, I will be unsuccessful in my business. And also to increase my creativity, I should challenge my assumptions and I should leave off my present perspective. This is the biggest challenge in uh, entrepreneurship. I have a question. There is a tennis tournament, singles. Every tennis player plays. This is one tennis player. This is the other tennis player. They play. One of them are is losing, so he is eliminated. The other one goes to the upper stage. In the first level of the tournament, how many matches are played? How many matches are played in a 256 tennis players tournament? In each match, there are two players. How many? Could you write? Or, okay, very good, Bereket. Congratulations. Bereket, very good. The, do you have any other answers? A anyone has any other answers? Anybody has any? any? No. Ah, Biruk. Biruk's answer is correct. In the first round, there are 128. Abbas is correct. There are 128 matches are played. Very big congratulations. My friends, why do I do applause? Why? What I increase? in your brain. What did I increase? Which neurotransmitter I increased at you? Dopamine. If you do a success, you know you found the correct answer, 128. I appreciated you. Very sincerely. Did you hear the applause? Did anyone? Yes. Thank you. And I increase the dopamine level. If I give you a very big price, as Ferus mentioned, $10,000, your dopamine level will be much higher and you will do the next project much better. Anyways, so in this tournament, how many matches are played in total? In the first round, it is 128. In the second round, it is 56. How many in total? Do, do you have any answers? Anybody has any answers? You can also give from the microphone or you can write it chat. chat. Bereket, congratulations. Bereket has found. Sorve has found. Congratulations. Big congratulations. The correct answer is 
255. How do you find it? It's a mathematical question. In the first round, there is 128 matches. In the second round, there's 64 matches. In the third, 36. If there's a final match. There's a match for the final, but there's no match for the third rank. So this is why in the final round, there's only one match. So by this way, my answer is 255. But if you challenge the assumption, if you challenge my present, which is dominating neural path, I may find the answer from another way. The method B is that for this, for this, the method B is different. If I had two players in the tournament, I would have one match. If I had four players in the tournament, the first round, two matches, and the final match, match for the final, three matches. If I had eight players in the tournament, I would have four matches in the first round, two matches in the second round, and the final match. Altogether, it is seven. So if I have 256 match, uh, players, how many matches? You can then find at a quicker way that it is 255. So what I did, I changed my typical neural path, which is the paradigm. So I found the answer from a shorter way. This is the method B. But there is also method C, which is if I change my paradigm, if I become more creative, which creativity means to change the neural path. If I change my neural path, the answer lies within the question. It says that if there are two players played, one of them is eliminated. So he left the tournament. He will never again play the tennis match in that tournament. But this one, if he wins, he will continue in the upper ranks, upper tools. So, in each match, there is one loser. How many losers, how many tennis players who have lost in this tournament? What is the answer for the lost tennis turnovers? How many tennis players lost or losers? How many of them has lost and left the tournament? Can you give the answers? 255. Yes. So the answer is the number of losers equivalent to number of matches. Then the answer is very quickly this. So in the entrepreneurship, if I change my paradigm, I can find a better solution. So all I need to understand is the customer's need. And also, I need to do the methodology according to their needs. There are many different methods to satisfy the customer. So if I change, change my paradigm, if I change my look, vision, I can do better. So to be able to be more creative, you should take your neural path, go out, which is the, one of the most difficult thing in the world. This is why Albert Einstein has said that it is very difficult to sh scatter the people's paradigm than scattering the atom. Because my ego, ego and my present Established neural paths doesn't allow me to challenge the assumption. So I should push myself. This is the first message that I would want to give to you.
To be able to do the creativity exercise, you can do something. For example, what is the connection between this pen and this PET bottle? What are the common things? One of them is both of them are plastics. What else? What else? What are the common things about, about them? What's the connection? Both of, two of them are plastics. What else? Can you answer? Yes. Brook, very good brook. Both of them are the, more or less the same height. Both of them, Caleb, congratulations, have foods in them. What else? Two of them are also cylindrical. I grasp two of them. They can be sold in the market, two of them. Two of them has caps. This also has caps. What else? Yaret, you are right. Both have the color blue. By the way, uh, Emre and Alper, can you hear me? Yes. I'm really sincere and you can understand from my feelings. I have traveled 56 countries and I have delivered trainings in at least 10 countries. This is one of the most intelligent, smart, really, I'm sincere, group I have ever met. One of them. I don't know who is the best, but this group is really good. Guys, I really believe in you. I'm sure that you will do great, great projects for Africa, for food, for US, for Europe, for Asia. I'm sure you will develop a lot of creative ideas and a lot of good projects. And I will try to help you. I gave you my, let me remind you my correspondence. I will try to help you. Please, of course, always write to Emre first, but also write to me as well. I will try to do my best. And I'm sure you will do a lot of good projects. Thank you, Abe. This is very encouraging and we are very happy that you offer your help. Thank you. So, one of the ways that you increase your creativity and Creativity is taking you out of classical neural path or in other words, taking you out from the classical paradigm or thinking outside of box. So we take this root path to out. One of the methodology for it is to make connection. If you want to make a connection with something, then it generally works. In the innovation projects, one thing is very basic. The, if you understand the customer's needs at one side, and if you look to the world around, who do you have as a resource? For example, if you are in Addis Ababa University, there are people around you. Biruk is there, for example. Or Samuel may be there, or perhaps it is, he is in Addis Ababa Science and Technology University. He is a resource for me. I'm a resource for him. Samuel is a resource for me. I'm a resource for him. Uh, Biruk, Kaleb, uh, Seganesh, Yaret, all of us are a resource for me. This is a resource. This is a resource. Laptop is a resource. Generative AI course that you will take today and the workshop tomorrow, these are resources. Our times as a resource. So one of the basic rules in success in entrepreneurship and creativity is understand, firstly, determine the real target market and try to understand the needs there and match these needs with the resources around. We have a lot of resources around. For example, air is a resource. 
in a project in Singapore, what we have did, did is 20 years ago, we used air, squeeze air, to increase in the washing machines, washing machines, cl uh, to cleaning effectiveness. So we used one tenth of this water, but higher squeeze uh, air, so we clean the dishes more effectively with one tenth of the water. What did it, how we do, did it? We used air, which is air is a resource around me. So combine air and dishwashers uh, dirt. You can combine. We have a lot of resources around. Also, this air has humid inside. So I can generate a machine in Africa to be able to overcome the famine problem or scarcity of water problem because in the air there is humid. So if I can distill this air, this is a resource for me. So if in an area there is an irrigation problem or in an area there is a water problem, something around me is a resource. So I need to understand the water problem and I need to use resources around. Or clouds up there are also resource. Or sea is a resource, etc. So make connection. The big picture of the innovation is like this. I need to bring several things together. Firstly, I should understand the market. I should firstly start with the market size, growth rates, and their analysis. In Turkey, by far ahead, I have the highest creativity tools I'm using. In Europe also, I'm one of the highest enlarged tool techniques. I'm using approximately 54 different creativity techniques. Only one of them is making connection. This is just one of them. There are 53 others. But my suggestion to you is start with the market. Sometimes we start with wrong direction. Generally, since my brain is limiting me, I'm starting my, with my own environment, with my own area. So for example, in typical workshops, everybody typically comes to me with two ideas. One of them is we are sitting in a restaurant, there is a, a smart iPhone, I should be ordering the, the menu from here, I should be doing the payment immediately from here. But this is the easy solution. This is the easy problem. Everybody sees that. Why did I see it? Because it is in my visual area and it, it, it is within my daily life. The other thing is related with the university classes and class notes, etc., and taking the exam. Yes, we all need that. But this, these two may not be the biggest problem in the world. So enlarge your vision. Don't jump into your own problems because my brain forces me to limit my vision with my own problems. So have a wider vision. For this, analyze the market size. I will touch to this in a couple of minutes. Then understand the market needs there. Then try to understand the sales channels and analyze present and future needs of the customers. And also do connection with the other's resources. So there is one word wrong here. Sorry for it. I will connect. This is my mistake. Sorry for it. On the other side, there are new technologies. As much as possible, please follow the technologies. Where is AI going? Where is generative AI going? And the change of the AI 
is rapidly, exponentially are changing. I have a friend who is expert in AI. He is giving uh, lectures in the university. He has done a lot of resources in 2018 related with the uh, artificial intelligence. Two years later, he went to a conference in the US at the beginning of 2020 in January. And he didn't give his paper, he didn't submit it. I asked why. He said that in two years' time, everybody has changed. My article written two years ago was updated anymore. So it's changing so fast. AR, artificial, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, that uh, metaverse, big data, IoT, cybersecurity, automated system, digital twins, everyone is changing. Blockchains, material science, medical science, everything is changed. The other thing is, within my startup, I need to have a solid business model. I need to have a strategy. I need to have value proposition. I need to manage my company very well. I need to value my employees. They should feel well with me. They should feel given importance. This is very important. Perhaps I should give some shares to them. Innovation culture is very important. Innovation teams are very important. Products, services, etc. So I should combine all of them. And also, I should do one more thing. It's called open innovation. If I do things within my startup, it is closed innovation. But if I do connection with, for example, Alper, who is in Palo Alto at the moment in the US, if I do connection with, sorry, Alper, uh, who is in Istanbul, if I do connection with Emre, excuse me, he's in Palo Alto in the US, if I do connection with Furious, if I do connection with the Abu Dhabi Science and Technology University, if I do connection with the Manchester Technical University, when I do the connection, I will also watch closely Manchester United soccer teams match when I visit there. So I should combine all this information around there. If I I'm not limited within my universe, or if I'm not limited with my startup, if I bring solutions and cooperation from all around the world, it is called open innovation. So I should do open innovation as well. I pass this. Make connections. For example, luggage. The first rolling luggage was found in 1970. But previous to it, in the years 1970, 17th, 16th, 18th century, 16th, 19th century, there were also luggages. But nobody could combine heavy luggage with the wheel around the need for it. Despite the fact that everybody was seeing the wheel, but nobody would make connection. Who did this? This is a guy called Bernard Sado. He made the connection. Why did he make this connection? Firstly, he was a very intelligent guy like you. This is the first reason. He could make connections very well. He was forcing his brain for new solutions all the time. He was that kind of a guy. This is the first reason. Second reason, he had a problem. If you suffer from a problem, then you need a solution. So please seek, search for problems. If the problem is big for the pro people, then you can be more successful. If the problem is widespread, affecting more and more people, then it's a bigger market. So what he was suffering is his wife was a very, very fashionable woman. She was taking a lot of staff with her when she was traveling, clothes, for example, eight clothes, six pairs of shoes, makeup sets. So the luggage, two luggages were very, very heavy. So poor Bernard was carrying very heavy luggage. So he was suffering from the problem. And he said that 
Is there a way that I can carry these luggages better? Then the third advantage came. He was observing around. When he was observing around, he saw this trolley where they were putting some luggages on top of it and taking them to the luggage room. So he made the connection. He said that if they put luggages on top of it, or if they put a engine, they also they were carrying some engines, machines on top of it within the airport. So he said that if they are carrying this machine and engine, I can put the trolley rollers underneath the uh, luggage. So this is how we can found it. So three important things. Firstly, be curious and make connection and think out of the box. Secondly, focus on the problems people suffer. Third, be observant, see the solutions around. According to our research, all the solutions in the world are common. I have analyzed 4,200,000 innovation solutions. With my partner in, in the UK, he has 40 people team, his name is Daryl, and also me having a three, four people around me. 45 people we are analyzing data over the last 20 years. We have discovered this is the biggest innovation data bank in the world. I will show some results to you. One of the things that we found all over the world is that whether it is the medicine sector industry, whether it is the aerospace, whether it is a defense, whether it is farming, whether it is automotive, or whether it is white goods, all the solutions for the same uh, contradictions are the same. There is a mat in the world for the innovation. So if you look from to the other industries, you can then find good solutions. Another combination example. We have teams which have black and white jerseys. For example, Newcastle United, Partizan in Serbia, Fulham in the UK, Palau in Greece, Juventus in Italy. And as far as I know, there is one club also black and white, Cotton Factory Club in Ethiopia. Is that correct? Cotton Factory Club has a black and white jersey. Is that correct? This is what I searched. Perhaps I'm wrong because I had never been in Addis Ababa, but I would love to come one day. Is there such a team? Cotton Club? Cotton Factory Club? In Ethiopia, could you reply? My answer, could you answer? Is there such a club? Please tell me. Okay, okay. Perhaps I'm wrong. So when Michael jo Michael Jackson passed away in 2009, there's a football team in Turkey which is black and white. Its name is Beşiktaş. I'm not supporting any team, but they invited me for a, a creativity a workshop. And we said that when he passed away, I asked to the people to be a good slogan during the match. What is the common thing between Michael Jordan and the black and white jersey? They said that our team because at the time Beşiktaş was going down or see, sometimes going down. It is like Michael Jackson. It bends, sometimes negatively, sometimes positively. So it's like this. The team goes like this. So sometimes good, sometimes bad. So this is a good connection. By the way, Michael Jackson himself has got the patent of these shoes. There is a, you see, there's a small nail here. So you put this nail, underneath the shoes, 
So he inclines, goes back. And there's also camera plays as well. Of course, they play with the camera also. So he get the patent for these shoes, by the way. I searched it because we searched the patents. My suggestion to you is that please search patents. For example, you can search USPTO.com. American patents. There are lots of resources there. So, for example, one solution for medical can be useful for the food solution for you. You can use it. You can replicate it in another sector, in another industry. Anyways, but a better, better solution came from the leader. He said that rest, peace, rest in peace, great Beşiktaş, which is the team, supporter Michael Jackson, who passed half of his life black and half of his white, life white. So this is a good, very good connection. So make connections. We combine all the information in the world. Okay, I start with the guideline. Firstly, please look to the enlarging industries. This x-axis, x-axis, is showing me how much compounding ground rates until 2025. The this specific technology is increasing. One of the highest increasing technologies in the world is your area. Enterprise applications AI, including generative AI. So in the each year, it increases 75% in growth by 75%. That means if it is hundred billion dollar business in one year, the next year is 175 billion. The other next year, the second year, multiply it with 1.75, which is possibly three or three thousand six, three three or six billion dollars, three hundred and six billion dollar industry. The next year, it's approximately it should be I calculate from the practically it should be something around five hundred thirty six billion dollars. So. First year one, second year three, the third year five, etc. So it's rapidly growing. So this is important. This is affecting all the other industries. So I should look very close eye to generative AI. What else? Grid scale energy storage solutions, automated vehicles, autonomous vehicles, IoT sensors, augmented reality, private space travel, fish engineering, these are all enlarging. So, as much as possible, learn what, understand what's going on in the world. You should not know in, in detail, but you should be aware of it. And also be cooperative with the guys who are good in these technologies. For example, I'm not best in Turkey in blockchain. But I have friends who understand blockchain. I'm not the best guy in uh, generative AI in Turkey. I'm like you. I know, I use it in the projects, I utilize it, I use myself, but I'm not the best. But I have a lot of friends who are good at generative AI. So I cooperate with them. So enlarge your surrounding and friends in these areas. But watch out what's going on in the world. These are the companies that is enlarging their technologies. For example, I will give you one example. There's a company that I gave, consultancy. They are specialized in voice to text, text to voice recognition, which is mainly used in call centers. We made a strategy with them. They said that Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, and Microsoft are the best in the world in voice-to-text, text-to-voice recognition technologies, which is correct. That's correct. I said that there are still ways to find an opportunity. I said that let's search language-based, because in generative AI and other AI solutions, 
Database is very important. I know that from the projects. So I said that more important than the technology is database quality. So where can we find better quality data in other languages? We made a search, we made an optimization. I said that in Arabic language, there are not good solutions by Amazon, Apple, or IBM, or uh, Microsoft. In Turkish, there are not good solutions. In Russian, there are not good solutions. So with this as a strategy, focus on this area. We cannot compete with Google. We cannot co compete with Amazon. We cannot compete with Apple. But in other languages, we are better than them. So this startup and grow very rapidly. You see, if you understand the technology and the market, you should not definitely fight for the big giants, but you can do better things. Perhaps they are not good in this technology in Africa. They are good in something else, but they are not good at irrigation. They are not good at farming. They are not good at medical. They are not good in other areas. You can find. So please widen your perspective. For example, database is very important. Why do you think that when you, for example, five years ago, let's say at year 2017, at year 2018, when you are a user, you need to, they are asking you what is written here. Why does Google was asking this question to me? Okay, they want to understand I'm, am I a robot or not? That's okay. But why do they check me with the letters? Why do you think so? Thank you very much, by the way, for a cotton factory club. By the way, I have never been in uh, Ethiopia, but I search. There's such a club. Yeah. For AI training. Now, congratulations to Nahum. Big applause. Yes, Nahum. They are training their artificial intelligence. Why? Because at the time, Google was a, a visual progressing the books and written material. What they were doing is scanning all the materials that they want and making it, transferring it to HTML format. So, using my eyes, typical human eyes, whether he sees this art or mansip or mansip, he was training, they were training their artificial intelligence. optical detection, text recognition technologies. They were using me as a product. If you don't pay anything to the product, you are the product. They are using you, which is very normal. But today, even if you pay for the product, you are still product because all these companies are getting their values based on data and their analysis. Over the last four years, Google has changed the attitude. They ask me now, vehicles, roads, and typical traffic signs. For example, he asked, they ask me, in which box there is car? I should choose this, 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 this. It asks me, in which box or square, there is traffic signs. I check this and check this. Look, there's a, something that is distorting my attention, which is the typical dishes for the satellite. I should not check this. Why does Google ask me anymore traffic signs and roads. What has changed? What is the reason? Because 
They are now developing the autonomous vehicle. They use me and my site, your site, to train their autonomous vehicle artificial intelligence programming. I should, the, the machine there should understand this is 50 maximum speed, 50 kilometers per hour, and I should not stop there, park there. And I should not confuse this with the satellite dish. So they are using me as a product to train their autonomous vehicle for it to be better. So, briefly, watch the big giants, what they are doing. Their value are coming from the R&D. And this R&D is 90% of the time are data analysis. So in this page, you can take this page and you can make this report, look where they are going. In these areas, there are some site positions like, like we have found for uh, voice recognition. Uh, by the way, Emre, can I exceed a little bit 10 minutes if you don't mind? Is it possible, my duration? So look, to the, so look to the industries. Watch, for example, drone is enlarging. Photovoltaic works are enlarging. Some industries are enlarging. So be there. You, are, you have a much big, bigger advantages than we are because you are young. My generation cannot do it. I'm doing it myself, but I'm pushing myself too hard. My generation, the years, uh, they, uh, they, some people between 50 and 60 or over 60, they don't do it. But you are more advantageous in this because your brains are fresh and you can adapt to the new technologies, new areas, new countries. Another thing, there's a chip war coming. So chip is becoming more and more important. When I graduated from the university, in 1987, approximately 81% of the chips in the world were produced either in the US or the Europe. 44% were in Europe, 37% were in US, so altogether were 81%. Only 19% were from Japan. Today, it is the Far East business. US lost its share to 12%. You, you, European Union lost it to 9%. Now, approximately 80% of the chips are produced are Far East, and China is the biggest enlarging country in this. This is why there's a chip force, because US doesn't want China to enlarge. Why do you have second-hand cars increase its price? because of the chip scarcity. Where are the chips? Firstly, there is chip war. US doesn't want to give the knowledge to China. China wants to develop their own knowledge. This is first reason. Second reason, there are lots of IOTs around. So all IOTs are using microchips. Chips between 0.2 to 20 nanometers are more fashion. So it's more difficult. And I'm giving two companies to advisor for two of them. They are enlarging. The second reason for it is IOTs are increased. This is why there is a scarcity of resource. Third, these mobile phones. They are using much more chips than the normal uh, typical phones. Smartphones are using a lot of small, less than 20 nanometers chips. So chip producers are inclined to giving the, the products to them. Fourth, Autonomous vehicle and electrical vehicles are using much more chips because electrical vehicles are not typical vehicles. They are like a PCB board altogether. So if there's any problem in the current, the whole system fails, cracks. So there are, they need a lot of chips inside. In autonomous vehicles, there are need a lot of IOTs and chips around. So chips are increasing. What does it does it mean for Africa? There will be bigger energy crisis. Today, approximately in the year 2020s, the typical world's consumption for energy is 600 
quadrillion British terminals. And this is expected to be in the year 2050, 900, which means 50% increase. But this analysis was done a couple of years ago because before chip wars started. When the chip, new generation chips were introduced over the last five years, the energy demand in the world will go up not to 900, but to 1,200 quadrillion British terminals. That means that today's energy production level should be doubled in the next 25 years. That means nuclear, coal, natural gas, petroleum will need to go continue. Because my renewable energy level will not be adequate for it. We are in a very nice dream. We don't see the reality. The reality is that energy need in the world is increasing every year and typical resources are not adequate for it and renewable energy will not meet this need so there will be bigger and bigger environmental problems. So if your projects increase renewable energy, this is one of the best things you can do in the world. If you do something with the white wind, if you do something with the thermonuclear energy, if you do something with the hydroelectric energy, if you do with the solar energy, if you do something with the wind energy, these are all nice. We need that. If you can do, bring two hydrogen atom together and produce helium. If you do the solar system, as you know, solar system works in that way, comes two hydrogen and they, are, they make the fusion and they produce helium. So there's a big energy. Then we can do a lot of things. Africa, population is increasing. Nigeria will be one of the biggest countries in terms of population in 20 years. The population of Nigeria will pass US. So it will come to the third rank in the next 20 years. So population growth is also another area. So world is changing. Please select the good market. How do we select the good market? Do some, firstly, select the market. Second, search for potential sub-markets. This is, we, we call it blush. For example, there used to be a lot of typical airlines, but what Ryanair and Southwest Airlines did, they become low-cost airlines. Why? Because they realize that there are many people who are cost sensitive. Secondly, there are many, many people which are not tapped, touched as a potential. They can travel with the airplane rather than the train or the buses. So they reduce the prices. So within the typical triangle market, they address to the lower level of paying groups. So this is a typical blue ocean. It's called blue ocean. Blue ocean, it was developed by the INSEAD University. There are two professors there, Kim Chan, which is he's from South Korea origin, but he was the professor at INSEAD Paris. And the other lady, the other person was uh, Rena Marble. She has an American uh, origin, but she works in uh, Paris. They developed a new theory, said that Rather than focusing on the red ocean, which is the, there are intense, heavy competition, go to the blue oceans, which is blue oceans are new areas. There are lack of competition there. So find, for instance, first the select area. Could be education, could be uh, agriculture, could be medicine, hospitals, could be transportation, could be delivery, 
could be logistics, could be automotive related, could be white goods related, could be energy. This is first choice. Second choice, in this area, find some niche areas where there is not much competition. If there are too much competition, it's called red ocean. Everybody cuts each other. You see, I broke my sweat, sweat, we cut each other. Find somewhere where there's a less competition. If you can do it, you can grow your business, but you should sustain this uh, area. For example, one of the markets did in Europe is there are Carrefour, there are luxury markets, supermarkets. For example, in Germany, Aldi markets did low cost market, but their stock unit numbers are lower. In a typical unit, in a typical supermarket, in a typical large market, this, uh, this is called stock keeping unit, this is called stock keeping. This is two different products. There are at least 100,000 different products. But within this Aldi, there is only 10,000 products. But these are the most needed products. So their inventory level are low. Their inventory costs are low. Their rental costs are low. These are in high street shopping malls. All these are in narrow streets. In Turkey, there is BIM. Uh, Emre and Alper will know it. BIM designed their strategy in a blue ocean. And in this blue ocean, they touch to the low cost business model. By this way, they reach much larger customer base because everybody wants so rather than to purchase this from Carrefour, they purchase this from ID or BIM in Turkey, because, which is lower. Because in ID or BIM, it is the product, number of products are low, so the inventory level are low, so inventory costs are low. Logistics and uh, depot costs, warehouse costs are low. Rents are much lower because they are in the second street, not in the high street. Fourth, there are less employees working there. If you put AI there, generative AI, you will reduce the cost much higher. There are lots of blue oceans. Comes to my mind. Let's go to it, and I want you to co um, contribute for it. Global warming and environment problem. This is a good area. Please give me more ideas. Please give your inputs. Agricultural inefficiency, which is one of the biggest problems in Africa. Famine problem, non malnutrition problem. How to food. There is lack of energy. There is lack of renewable energy. Big data is a very good blue ocean. AI and data analytics. 5G, 6G. But in Africa, you can still find some ways for the non-smart dump phones. There are some telecommunication solutions for the simple uh, 2Gs. This is also needed not everybody has 5G telephones. Some people have 2Gs problems. So, so 2G, you can bring solutions for 2Gs as well. Alternative payment system, we work a lot. This is a developing area. Alternative payment system and alternative banking system. One of the fashion in the world at the moment is full digital banking. A banking that doesn't have any branch. In giving two banks, a consultancy for this. One of them is in Europe, one of them is in Turkey. AI and image processing, this is a very area. Blockchain, sustainable issues, nanotechnology and plastics, 
electrical vehicles. For example, in electrical vehicles, giants like Tesla, Hyundai, Toyota, it's a tough market. They will not allow you to go in, but you can be supplier to their suppliers. Or charging units, you can be there. Or, for example, battery electrical vehicle, typical vehicle, cars, are difficult market, but there is also opportunity in drone market. There is also opportunity in scooter market, which is more suitable to you, because it's easier to enter. In the others, Toyota is dominating, Mercedes is dominating, Tesla is dominating. By the way, do you know more than half of the electrical vehicles in the world now is produced in China? They are producing more than there's some brands producing more than Tesla. Nobody is in detail of it. Immigration problems, urbanization problems. There are many poor people trying to migrate to Europe, US, and they are drawn in Mediterranean Sea. This is a big problem. This is a human problem. There is banking needed for the entrepreneurs. If you are an entrepreneur, if you go to the bank, you cannot get credits. You cannot get loans. The bank should be partner to your project. There's a big opportunity for it. Anti-religion today, remote diagnosis and treatment, ERPs, mobile ERPs, gene editing. What else do you have in your mind? What are the blue ocean that you see? I will stop in a couple of six, seven minutes later. Please give me some inputs to me now. Don't you have any idea? Emre, perhaps they have an idea, but they, they are very clever entrepreneurs. They don't want to share it here for it to be not copied. Bill, Estefanos, first, you are intelligent people. Mikias, Kalea, Tenok, you are intelligent. Do you see any blue ocean in the world? Where are the blue oceans? Yektab, if nobody is uh, volunteering, I can give you an example. Please, I believe please that, um, there, is, there is a blue ocean in tech education for Africa. There are so many talented, brilliant young individuals in the continent, and they do not have easy, free access to high-quality education in technology. That's correct. We have the same problem in Turkey. An American came, company came to me and said that I have content. Please deliver it to Turkish people. So we will do the joint venture with them. He's right. There's a technological training needs for people. This is a blue ocean. This is a typical blue ocean. Very good, Emre. Congratulations. A big applause to Emre. Another big applause to Milkias Gabriel. Supply. Clean water supply. This is another area. What else? A Mikias. I will show you a I will show you a product. You will like it. You will love this. This is a clean water supply product, Mikias. Its name is Water Gen or Water Gen. Fresh water. It seems like it's everywhere. 
but it's not. And there just isn't enough to drink. By 2025, two-thirds of the world will face drinking water shortages. But there is an answer. Just look around you. It's everywhere. We are all surrounded by water. The atmosphere is the world's single source of pure water. Thanks to WaterGen, a company with revolutionary technology, pure drinking water can be available for everyone, everywhere, saving millions and improving billions of lives. WaterGen extracts fresh, pure water directly from the air, from a portable source that never runs dry. A single WaterGen unit can produce enough clean, pure, safe water for a household, office, school, or hospital. Did you like it, Milkias? Yes, I like it. So, analyze water again. It's an Israeli company, by the way. And its main target was the Israel soldiers <laughs> at the beginning. They established it. And they are using humid, humidity in the, in the air and they are the, distilling it and condensing it and producing the uh, pure water. So I believe that there can, you, for example, there are also other methods. Uh, they, once somebody developed uh, a filter, very simple wind filter for, for African people, uh, where there is not clean water, dirty water, and this filter filters uh, and makes it as clean as possible. Sometimes very easy solutions are needed. Very simple uh, solutions are needed. I will show you another one for this. Anyways, so uh, last topic. Please understand customers' need and to be able to meet their needs, there is one thing which is overlooked, which is not seen in the world. We need to solve contradictions. I made an analysis for 4.2 million data in the world innovation data and I've seen that if you want to be successful in innovation and entrepreneurship the customer needs always come with a contradiction for example as Milkias said there is a clean water needed but the Water around here, perhaps it's dirty. I should clean it. But cleaning water is an expensive solution. So I should solve this contradiction. It should be as sterilized as possible. It should be as clean as possible. But the methodology should be cheap. Another area, Henok, Kebede, you are right. The idea of electricity should be easily accessible as Nikola Tesla has done in 1901 in Cliff. He sent electrical signals and he could enlight a bulb from the air. So perhaps we are in a wrong direction. Anyways, <clears throat> we can perhaps transmit electricity over the air. Intel has done a lot of experiments with this. Anyways, we need to solve contradiction. For example, you develop a product, a suitcase, a refrigerator, washing machine, automotive products, parts. It should be durable, strengthful. Okay, but whenever they are strengthful, they are heavier. But I want my car to be lighter because if it is heavier, then I consume more energy more fuel. Particularly in the electrical vehicles, I work a lot of projects with the electrical vehicles, they should be very light. But if the parts are light, 
Then we have a second problem. How can I solve it? This software is the largest data bank in the world. This one is Turkish, but I will show you in English as well. It says to me that if I have a contradiction, if I want to increase the strength, and the paradigm that brings me a problem is weight, if I want to increase the strength but reduce the weight, it says me that the number of uh, solutions that I will find are limited in the world. In all industries, they have the same solution. Whether it is automotive parts, whether it is white goods, whether it is airspace, whether it is uh, luggages, suitcases, or laptop. The first method in the world used most widely is co change the composition of the material. This is the first. It says that out of 4.2 million data bank solution in the world, largest ever data bank, if I have a workshop in future together in a physical environment, I will show you the, how to use it. The first method in the world is out of this, 2,300 of them are solving this contradiction out of 4.2 million. And this 2,300 solution are using mostly material composition. The second solution is produce material. The third one is another dimension, which if there is a pillar, put a column underneath of it. Like in the bridges. First, for example, Samsonite have you discovered a blue ocean where lighter but central suitcases, luggages. How do they do it? They solve a contradiction. How? It is light, but it is very strong. This is how Samsonite sells their products at a very expensive prices. They solve this contradiction. How do they do it? They change the material composition. In their R&D centers in Belgium and in their R&D centers in US, they are changing the composite of material. They are producing the best plastic composite for their suitcases, luggages. First method, what we are doing in the automotive industry, we are using aluminum. Second method, use porous material in drones, an unarmed uh, vehicles, we are using porous material. Third solution, if there is a stack, put column underneath. Fourth, make it layer by layer, segmentation. Fifth solution, make it round. This is why bridges are round. This is why Samsonite are round. This is why sometimes we are using round shapes in uh, washing machines for it to be the, the material to be strongful. We put a press of some sh uh, round shapes. So if there's a pressure on top of the washing machine, it is more durable with limited uh, thin layer of aluminum more, is more durable when there is a round shape embedded on, in it. I made a big research, 2,700 animal and plants. How do they do innovation? Birds are using the same techniques. Birds bones are very light, but very thankful. They evolved by changing the composite material inside it. They have a lot of pores inside the bones. They, when there is a, a pillar, there is a column. They have a segmented layers, and also they have spherical, spherical shapes. Another question, if you are doing, if you are producing a ruler or antenna, it should be long because it should function. But at the same time, it should be short. For it, I should carry it. For it to carry, 
it should be short. But when I use it, it should be long. If I put this contradiction to my data bank, it says that length of moving object should be long, but at the same time, it should be short. How can I show, solve this contradiction? 4.2 million data bank in the world. This is the biggest innovation data bank we have developed in the world. It says that 1,900 of them has solved this contradiction. How did they solve it? The first method that is used in the world, in this data bank, is do virtual copy. The second statistically higher method is segmentation. The third is make it flexible. So we use this. So if I have a product, the solution is already known. For example, for ruler to measure, I know that it should be either virtual copy or segmentation or flexible, which are the solutions. You see, these are done by ad hoc, trial and error. But indeed, in the world, there's a mathematic for the solutions. I do it by trial and error ad hoc, but if I had known, if I had looked to the different industries, if I had combined their knowledge, I would be able to solve it very easily. So these are the solutions. We did another analysis. We asked the question, if there's a trend in the products, I was finishing two minutes, there's a trend. The first rulers were found like this, but they made it bendable, foldable in the year 1830s. But the client is like here, he always wants more. He says that when I measure it, it should be longer. When I carry it, it should be shorter. So he pushed us. Then human being found another solution. So it increased more foldable. Foldability we increased. So it folded to 10 times. Then we make a breakthrough innovation. We make it flexible which is dynamics. Then it, has, it, it became ultrasonic, then it became laser. In innovation, for example, I analyzed some climbing animals. Climbing animals, like for example, goats, have two souls, two parts souls. Why? Because the souls the underneath their feet should be large because if there is a bear attacking the goat, the goat should be able to run away. If there is a wild dog attacking the goat, he should be able to run away. So he needs wider saw underneath the feet. But when climbing the rocks or when climbing the uh, dams, because when the, the waters go down in the dam, there are some salty materials, so they like salt. They want to climb. Their feet should be narrow to put them in the, the rock, uh, under, in, the, in some parts, some small parts, uh, narrow parts uh, between the rocks or, or stones. So it should be wide and narrow. The, Nature solutions for this is two parts. What gecko do in Africa? They climb like 90 degrees. How? Their feet are flexible and they are also using very adaptive to the rocks. So he can climb like this. And also there is, they use another technique. It's called Van der Waal links in electricity. They do wonder wall connection. So in a company that came to me for a consultancy said that we have refrigerator that want, we want it to be larger in sight, but our consumers doesn't want it to be large in within the kitchen because they have narrow areas. We made it four parts. It is the first portable product refrigerator in the world. Arch, we developed it together with the Archer, a Turkish company, 
its name is divide and cool. We put parts within here, small parts. So these are valid everywhere in the world. So there is a certain trend in the products. We know that all products, if there is a dynamization trend, there will be one part, then second, two parts, then multiple parts, then it will be flexible, and it will be virtual reality. How do we know it? My partner, Daryl, was consulting to Samsung. They developed foldable to four parts in the year 2006. Then they developed, they took the patent for the OLED screens 10 years ago, and they launched two years ago. They know what they are, they knew where it will go. Now it is going to augmented reality, like my report. So we know that the trends are going where? One part, multiple parts, flexible and infrared. So we know products where it will go. We make radar for it. So we know that some products where it will go and we know the trend and we can bring some solutions for it. I will finish here briefly. First thing, think out of the box. Force your brain to, to look from the other paradigms. Secondly, look to the sectors because not each sector is useful for you. Select the sector, industry. Look to the enlarging industries and affecting to each other. For example, agriculture is not growing very fast, but it is affected with generative AI. So use generative AI in agriculture. Use generative AI in healthcare. Be selective industries. Don't go to the first industry in your hand. Do research. Third message. There are some sub-sectors, blue oceans in each sector. Find them and put a different business model. Four, there is certain mathematics in the creativity in the world. There are certain solutions in different industries, different sectors. Combine them. Have a nice day. Sorry for extending the uh, speech. I want to be as much useful as to you. Sorry for exceeding my time. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yekta. I think it's uh, a very uh, insightful uh, workshop. I believe uh, most of uh, us have learned uh, something new and something significant as well. Uh, so, yeah, guys, uh, let's also give a round of applause for Mr. Yekta using the emojis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I, I thank you as well. All right. It was a very lovely time. So I would like to thank you and as well as uh, the participants who joined uh, uh, this uh, meeting for the workshop. Uh, one thing I would like to remind everyone is that we'll continue this session uh, with the Akaton Dynamics in the uh, most probably after 30 minutes. So don't forget to tune uh, to tune in for that uh, session as well. I'd like to thank everyone for being here, for participating here. And once again, uh, thank you, Mr. Ekta, for coming here and uh, sharing us uh, your knowledge, your experience for us. Thank you very much. So, everybody. I, I, I must sincere that it is one of the best, uh, most intelligent uh, group I have ever met. I believe in your potential. Goodbye. All right. Thank you so much.